Hey, welcome to yet another episode of Gibbon Travelogue. In this video, we are going to visit one of the most historically and culturally rich cities in the world, the 3,000-year-old capital of China, Beijing. And we are going to explore the top seven things to do in this incredible city. Come along and let's dive right into it. Our first stop is none other than the awe-inspiring Great Wall of China, Wan Li Changchen. After a five-year survey, Chinese authorities in 2012 have concluded that the Great Wall of China measures a total of 21,196 kilometers. It starts from the eastern coast and stretches into the far western deserts, winding through 404 towns in 15 provincial regions across China and is acknowledged as the largest man-made structure on Earth. In 1987, the Great Wall of China was recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and was also declared as one of the seven wonders of the world in 2007. Our journey to the Great Wall of China starts at a little village called Mu Tianyu in Huairou District, just 70 kilometers northeast of Beijing. Judging from the shops and eateries at this village, it is quite apparent that the place caters to an international crowd. A shuttle bus takes us to the foothills where we can ascend to the level where we can access the Great Wall. There are three ways to ascend to the wall level. Visitors can walk up by foot, just 4,000 over steps. Definitely not our choice. So we get to choose between a two-rider chairlift or a four-rider gondola. Being a slightly more adventurous family, we chose the more exciting chairlift. We arrive at the top. The winter air is crisp, carrying with it a whisper of history and an aura of grandeur. At the viewing platform, we look out into the horizon, the landscape unfolding before us in a breathtaking panorama. The Great Wall of China winding along the rugged ridges of the mountains, stretched as far as the eye could see. It was an architectural marvel and a symbol of China's historic past. This part of the wall used to serve as the northern barrier, defending the capital and the imperial tombs. First built in the mid-6th century during the Northern Xi, the Mu Tianyu section is older than the better-known Ha Ta Ling section of the Great Wall and have gone through a series of rebuilding over the centuries. Built mainly with granite, the wall is around 8 meters high and 5 meters wide. This section of the wall are the best preserved among all the sections of the Great Wall. Descending down back to the foothills using the toboggan or slide rail is an exciting way to end our Great Wall experience. With a total length of 1.6 km, their top speed can reach up to 30 km per hour. Next, we are heading to the majestic Ming tombs, resting place of emperors from the Ming dynasty. The Ming tombs are a collection of mausoleums built by the emperors of the Ming dynasty, just 42 kilometers north of Beijing. They were listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 2003. The tomb's location and structure are classic representations of Chinese feng shui theory. It is always recommended to have a local guide to show you around and share the intricacies of the Ming tomb's historic past. Currently, only three tombs are open to the public, Tingling, Changling and Zhaoling. This is the Tingling tomb, where the Wanli Emperor, together with his two empresses, was buried. The tomb was excavated in 1956 and to date remains the only tomb to have been excavated. The mausoleum consists of five halls and is located 27 meters below ground. The excavation of Tingling revealed an intact 1,195 square meters tomb with more than 3,000 artifacts, which include items such as jade pendants, gold and silver ingots, wooden figurines, burial objects, as well as the skeletons of the emperor and his two empresses. Excavation completed in 1957 and a museum was established in 1959. The Cultural Revolution of 1966 
resulted in a fanatical raid guards storming the Tingling Museum and Tomb and dragged the remains of the one the Emperor and Empresses to the front of the tomb where they were denounced, burned and thrown away. Tiananmen Square, the world's largest city square, is a symbol of China's political and cultural significance. Surrounded by iconic landmarks, it is a must-visit for any traveller seeking to understand the pulse of modern China. The square contains the Tiananmen Gate, Monument to the People's Hero, the Great Hall of the People, and the Mausoleum of Mao Zedong. It was also at this square on 1st October 1949 that Chairman Mao proclaimed the founding of the People's Republic of China. The square is 215,700 square meters and has great cultural significance as it was the site of several important events in Chinese history. The Tiananmen or the Gate of Heavenly Peace is a gate in the wall of the Forbidden City to the north of Tiananmen Square. It was built during the Ming Dynasty in 1417 and underwent destruction and restoration throughout the centuries. Two stone columns called Hua Piao each with an animal on top of it, also stand in front of the gate. Originally, these installations were designed for commoners to address their grievances by either writing or sticking petitions on the columns. However, the examples in front of the imperial city were purely decorative. Now, we step into the Forbidden City, once home to Chinese emperors. Its intricate architecture and expensive courtyards leave visitors in awe. Wow, this is like walking through a living history book. Located right at the heart of Beijing, this sprawling architectural marvel, encompassing 720,000 square meters, was constructed over 14 years, from 1406 to 1420 during the Ming Dynasty. The Forbidden City was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987. It is also listed by UNESCO as the largest collection of preserved ancient wooden structures in the world. In 2018, the Forbidden City's market value was estimated at 70 billion US dollars, making it both the world's most valuable palace and the most valuable piece of real estate anywhere in the world. The Forbidden City served as the imperial palace for almost five centuries, hosting 24 emperors from both the Ming and Qing dynasties. The architectural brilliance of the Forbidden City is a striking blend of classic Chinese design and meticulous planning. It boasts 980 buildings and 9,999 rooms. The palace complex is divided into two main sections, the outer court, used for ceremonial purposes, and the inner court, where the emperor's living quarters and private affairs were conducted. Here are some of the most iconic features of the Forbidden City. The Meridian Gate or Woman is the southern and largest gate of the Forbidden City. Unlike the other gates of the Forbidden City, the Meridian Gate has two protruding arms on either side which have two bells and two drums. The gate has five arches. The center arch was reserved for the Emperor alone. The only exceptions were for the Empress on the day of a wedding and the top three scholars of the imperial examination on the day of their conferment. All other officials and servants had to use the other four side arches. The Hall of Supreme Harmony, Tai He Tian, together with the Hall of Central Harmony, Zhong He Tian, and the Hall of Preserving Harmony, Bao He Tian, constitute the outer court of the Forbidden City. The Hall of Supreme Harmony is an imposing structure that serves as a ceremonial centre for imperial gatherings and coronations. Built above three levels of marble stone base, this building is the largest surviving wooden structure in China. The Hall of Supreme Harmony is the tallest building in the palace complex at 30 metres. It is the ceremonial centre of imperial power and the largest surviving wooden structure in China. The six pillars nearest the imperial throne are covered with gold and the entire area is decorated with a dragon motif. The original hall was built in 1421 
during the Ming Dynasty, destroyed seven times by fires during the Qing Dynasty, and rebuilt for the last time in 1695 to 1697. The Hall of Central Harmony is the smallest of the three outer court buildings. It was used by the Emperor to prepare and rest before and during ceremonies. The Hall of Preserving Harmony was used for rehearsing ceremonies and was also the site of the final stage of the Imperial Examinations. This hall also features an Imperial Throne, though smaller than the one at the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Just after the Hall of Preserving Harmony, we come across a bronze cylindrical water tank, which we were told is not only for ornamental purposes, but also facilitates daily life, as well as putting out fires, especially during the dry winter months. The Palace of Prolonging Happiness, Yan Si Kong, is located at the southeast inner court. It was built in 1420 as one of the six eastern palaces and had been the residence for concubines. The palace was destroyed by a fire and remained in ruins until 1909, when the Qing government began rebuilding it in a western style with a central basin. The idea was to have the palace built on a white marble base surrounded by a canal so that visitors could see fishes swimming through glass walls. But the project was stopped due to no budget. Yan Si Kong in the Forbidden Palace has been an obscured part of the complex until the Chinese serial The Story of Yan Si Palace was aired in 2018. Now everyone is curious to know how the actual palace looks like. Up towards the northernmost reach of the Forbidden City is the Imperial Garden. There are a couple of cafes here amid a pleasing network of ponds, artistically shaped rocks, walkways and pavilions designed to be reminiscent of Southern China landscapes. Within the Imperial Garden is the Lodge of Spiritual Cultivation, Yang Xing Zai, and used to be resident of Reginald Fleming Johnson, the English tutor of the last Emperor Puyi. After spending a day at the Forbidden City, we departed using the Gate of Divine Might, Sun Woman. A visit to the Forbidden City is definitely a must-do and is one of the top attractions in China with close to 17 million visitors annually. Located in the western outskirts of Beijing, the Summer Palace Yuhe Yuan is the masterpiece of classical Chinese garden design. It is also declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1998. This sprawling imperial retreat spans over 2.8 million square meters. It's centered around Longevity Hill and Kunmin Lake with the latter covering about three quarters of the area. Although the origins of the Summer Palace date back to the 12th century, it only took to its current form during the Qing Dynasty in the 18th century. Around 1749, Emperor Qianlong ordered the construction of a palace in the vicinity to celebrate the 60th birthday of his mother. At the same time, more lakes were created and the enlarged lakes were named Kunmin Lake by the Emperor himself. The earth excavated from the expansion was used to enlarge an existing hill, which was later renamed Longevity Hill. The Summer Palace was completed in 1764. The palace was later expanded and embellished by the Empress Dowager Cixi, who channeled funds meant for the modernization of the Chinese Navy to enhance the palace to celebrate her 60th birthday. Here are some of the attractions within the palace complex. Those coming from the city are likely to enter Summer Palace via the East Gate, Tong Kong Men. The very first building upon entering the palace is the Hall of Benevolence and Longevity, Ren Sou Dian. It was built in 1750 and burned down in 1860, just like most of the buildings in the Summer Palace during the Second Opium War. It was reconstructed in 1888 under the rule of Empress Dowager Cixi. In front of the hall is a strange bronze mythical animal called Qiling, which is said to be able to detect disloyal subjects. The Hall of Joyful Longevity, Le Sou Tang, was one of the first buildings constructed under the reign of Emperor Qianlong as a residence for his mother. Subsequently, Cixi took a real pleasure in spending her time in this hall whenever she came to the Summer Palace. 
the long corridor or Tang Lang, stretches from the Hall of Joy and Longevity in the east to Shitang Pavilion in the west. The entire corridor is 728 meters long and contains artistic decorations, including paintings of famous places in China and scenes from Chinese mythology and folk tales. It was first built in 1750 by Emperor Qianlong so that the Empress Mother could enjoy a walk through the gardens protected from the elements. Like most of the Summer Palace, the Long Corridor was severely damaged by fire during the Second Opium War and was later rebuilt in 1886. As we look across the Kunming Lake, we can see at the far end the 17 arch bridge, Si Ti Kong Chiao. It has 17 different styles of arches on it, incorporating features of ancient bridges in various parts of China. The marble boat, Shi Fang, is a lakeside pavilion on the grounds of the Summer Palace. It was first erected in 1755 during the reign of Emperor Qianlong but was burned down and restored in 1893 on the orders of Empress Dowager Cixi. Like the original, the superstructure is made out of wood but painted to imitate marble. Most tour guides will tell you that the marble boat is often seen as an ironic commentary of extravagance as funds meant for the Imperial Navy were channeled to construct this ornamental boat. Today, the Summer Palace is among the most visited destinations in China and attracts about 10 million tourists annually. The Temple of Heaven was where emperors once prayed for good harvests. It stands as a symbol of Chinese spirituality and its stunning architecture and serene ambience make it a must-see attraction. Located in the heart of Beijing, the Temple of Heaven of Tian Tan was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1998. The temple complex was constructed from 1406 to 1420 during the reign of Yongle, Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, who was also responsible for the construction of the Forbidden City and the Ming Tombs. That temple was later turned into a park and opened to the public for the first time in 1918. This is the entrance of the park, Tian Tang Gong Yuan, and it's snowing quite heavily. The park itself is huge, 2.73 square kilometers and four times bigger than the Forbidden City. The temple complex comprises three main groups, all built according to strict philosophical requirements. The Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest is a magnificent triple gabled circular building measuring 36 meters in diameter and 38 meters tall. It has three levels of marble stone base where the emperor prayed for good harvest. The building is completely wooden with no nails. The original building was burned down by a fire caused by lightning in 1889 and was rebuilt several years after the incident. The Imperial Vault of Heaven is a single cable circular building built on a single level of marble stone base. It is located south of the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest and resembles it, but is smaller. It is surrounded by a smooth circular wall, the echo wall, that can transmit sounds over large distances. The Imperial Vault is connected to the Hall of Prayer by the Vermilion Steps Bridge, a 360 meter long raised walkway that slowly ascends from the vault to the Hall of Prayer. The Circular Mon Altar is the altar proper, located south of the Imperial Vault of Heaven. It is an empty circular platform on three levels of marble stones, each decorated by lavishly carved dragons. The number of various elements of the altar, including its bolasters and steps, the center of the altar is a round slate called the Heart of Heaven or the Supreme Yang, where the Emperor prayed for favourable weather. Due to the design of the altar, the sound of the prayer will be reflected by the guardrail, creating significant resonance, which was supposed to help the prayer communicate with heaven. Today, the Temple of Heaven continues to be a revered cultural and historical treasure for both locals and visitors alike. 
No trip to Beijing is complete without indulging in its exquisite cuisine. Try the world-famous Peking duck, renowned for its crispy skin and succulent meat. Originating either with the Qing Dynasty Manchurian invaders, or perhaps brought to China by Muslim immigrants from Central Asia way back in the Mongol Yuan Dynasty, succulent roast duck is Beijing's biggest culinary favourite. One of the best restaurants to serve roast duck in Beijing is Da Tong Roast Duck that was established more than 30 years ago by Tong Zhenxiang, aka Da Tong, who is also known as a mad scientist of food. Da Tong is known for its super lean roast duck. Instead of using a traditional square oven, they use an innovative spherical wood-fired oven. Peking duck is eaten with various condiments and wraps. While other restaurants serve cucumber, scallions and plum sauce, Ta Tong offers additional condiments and some Tian Mian Jiang, a sweet soybean sauce. This is a must-eat in Beijing. Okay, that concludes our whirlwind tour of Beijing's top attractions and culinary delights. Remember, this is just a taste of what this amazing city has to offer. So pack your bags and embark on your own Beijing adventure. So if you enjoy our video, don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel, Gibbon Travelog. Until our next video, we will see you again. See you!